these two terms, chronotropic and inotropic. So you have drugs that or, or conditions that affect anything will either affect the chronotropic or the inotropic property of the heart or even both. Let's practice. Because I remember in the test, there was a section that will ask you, uh, can you tell me if the following will have a chronotropic or an inotropic effect and will it have a positive or a negative effect? Let's say, oh, we talked about calcium channel blockers. So calcium <coughs> blockers. Calcium channel blockers. So will this have, what do you think? Will this exert chronotropic or inotropic? Inotropic pumping, right? So will it, ex if it's a blocker, will it exert a positive or a negative effect? Uh, no, negative. It will slow down. So positive means it will increase it. Negative means it will slow it down. So if it's a calcium channel blocker, it will exert a negative inotropic effect. Do you understand? I will ask you this in the test. So that's what, if you're, let's say, people who are hypertensive or maybe tachycardia, you give them calcium channel blockers to slow down the heart rate. Slow down. These are people maybe you have increase resistance here you want them to slow that down how about uh, let's say increased blood volume so there's a lot of blood will that exert an inotropic or chronotropic if there's a lot of blood what does the heart have to do if there's a lot of blood pump stronger you can write Pump faster, if it's pump faster, it's chronotropic, right? Positive. Don't you think that increased blood volume will also make it pump stronger, right? So I'm going to write inotropic, positive also. How about, um, okay, beta blockers. Beta blockers, what are beta blockers for? They slow down the heart rate. <laughs> beta blockers are given to slow down the heart rate. So it's chronotropic negative. Okay? People who are losing blood, hypovolemia, they lost a lot of blood. What will a hypovolemia episode due to the heart. What did you say? Speed up? Okay, so I'm going to write chronotropic positive. It will cause a positive chronotropic effect. Why? Because you want to compensate. You, If you lost a lot of blood, your tissue still need supply. So you're going to pump faster to deliver. About maybe if you... Pregnancy. So people who are pregnant, their blood volume doubles because they have to supply for the baby. So this one is the same as this one. Okay. Will you be able to answer that section in case it comes out in the test? Okay. So just always, just think first. Remember, the reason you're asked that portion of the test, I think, is to remind students about the two parts to the heart and to remind you that we treat the heart two ways. <coughs> you want to help the beating part and you want to help the pumping part, the heart rate and the pumping. So how do you uh, look at the heart rate part of the heart? You use an EKG. So the EKG uh, is a measurement of the electrical activity of the heart, electrocardiogram. When the heart fires, it gets picked up as waves. Okay. So there's the typical waves. You have the P wave, the QRS, and the T wave. So this wave is the depolarization. You remember with neurons, 
when they, they depolarize, then they fire. So this measures the pacemaker curve. Remember this part over here? This part over here, the pacemaker activity of the heart is what is being measured by a typical EKG. So what does this? They function as nerves. If they function as nerves, they depolarize. So after they depolarize, what happens to the muscles here? The muscles will contract. So the, the depolarization of this pacemaker is picked up as waves. And that's the waves that we see in the EKG right here. P, U, R, S, and the T. So the P wave is uh, it's a measurement of atrial depolarization. This one measures the atria, the pacemaker in the atria. This means the atria has been depolarized. What happens when you depolarize? Depolarize means stimulate, right? What happens when you stimulate the atria? The atria will contract. Very good. So atrial contraction happens somewhere around here. It's after. Then in the meantime, if you look at this uh, pacemaker, it just keeps firing. So this one fires first, then this contracts, and it just keeps going. Then this will fire. This is the QRS wave. There. So that's my QRS. What happens when you stimulate? This is ventricular depolarization. When you stimulate the ventricles, the ventricles will contract. So contraction some happens somewhere around here. So here is atrial contraction. And here is the ventricle contracting after the QRS wave. So you see, look at. If you have an EKG with problems in the P wave, you predict you predict you predict problems where in the pacemaker in the atria. Very good. The effect will be in the atria. If you have problems here in the QRS, you will look at in the ventricles. So if you have problems in the P wave, what is the function of the atria again? receive the blood right if you have problems in the p wave there will be problems in the atria and the atria is supposed to receive blood these are the patients that will have the what you call congestive heart failure why the heart is supposed to receive the blood that is coming from my lungs and from my systemic do you agree right so if it's not if there's a problem which what receives the atria if there's a problem here it will not be able to properly receive or dispose of the blood that it received they will go into congestive heart failure there's like water in the lungs because it's not able to go so they stay in the lungs in the meantime the pressure will push the fluid in the blood will push it out into the lungs so you will hear fluid in the lungs you predict p wave problems in the atria okay if there's a problem in the qrs in the qrs they're supposed to deliver the blood out right so what do you predict you will also predict the same thing right you will also predict some congestion but between the two congestive heart failure will happen first here then this one because this this is supposed to pump the blood out there right mm -hmm. and you will predict with this one maybe abnormal heartbeats okay so this is how i want you to study your ekg Look, I want you to know how a normal EKG tracing looks like and
compare normal with abnormal. So normal, uh, the, what will be picked up with EKG, abnormal rhythms called arrhythmias. You know what tachycard tachycardia means? Increased heart rate. If I ask you to define tachycardia, even if you just wrote increased heart rate, you don't even write the number, that's okay. But in our book, it's is this the same as the book? I don't know. But for um, normally, if it's over 100, you say tachycardia. I think the book is lower. Is it over 80? We go by the book. If this is wrong, please remind me, okay? But if you just wrote increased heart rate, that's good enough for me. Bradycardia, so low heart rate. Then anything that's abnormal, it's called arrhythmia. Sometimes you have premature atrial contraction. So look, let's look at this one right here. Let's look at some abnormal heart rates. See? You, when you look at an EKG, you want to always, so that's why you want to train your eyes on a normal one. You want to see P followed by QRS. P followed by QRS. Here, there's a P, there's no QRS. There's a P, then QRS. There's a P, abnormal. P, no. There's QRS, P, no QRS. So this is telling me there was a block, right? There's a blockage so that the EKG is not able to proceed. So where do you think in the patient's heart will be the problem here? Yeah. Between the atria and the ventricle, right? Somewhere here in the SA node. This is where the problem is. It's th this, the patient had a heart attack or an MI, and this tissue here is dead. So if this tissue is dead, you remember that you have your pacemaker. There's pacemaker here, there's pacemaker here. They're still working. They're just not able to communicate because this part here that communicates is dead. That's why there's a block. That's why eventually there's QRS, but they're not able to communicate anymore. You say that there's a heart block. So in the test, if I ask you to interpret, you don't even have to write um, maybe the actual diagnosis. Maybe you can just write, there's a heart, there's a block. That's okay with me. We're just, we're, we're still, just trying to study basic EKG. I want you to understand P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S. Then there's the T wave where there's the relaxation of the ventricle. Again, you understand this one? Can you interpret this? You see why this is called heart block? What do you think? You see the P, right? There's no QRS. So, but then sometimes there's a QRS. It's still able to move. So there is a blockage still. Hard block. Look at with I want you to know these two, A fib and B fib. This two very important for you to know. A fib and B fib. Fibrillation means irregular, and the irregular heart rate here is in the atria. I know that this is a fib because I see the ventr ventricles, they fire, they're stronger than the atria. So this, and I don't see an actual atrial depolarization. So with A fib, you see just wrinkles like that. Okay? And then this is for the ventricle. So irregular beating of the atria, atrial fibrillation. So in other words, instead of contracting one strong contraction like that, the atria, they're scattered plaques over there so that the firing is not one solid stimulation. So there's atrial fibrillation like this, okay? And then with the ventricles, look at this, the ventricles. Ventricle 
See, the thing about fibrillation is it's like tremors. It's not able to contract powerfully. Which of the two is more dangerous, AFib or VFib? What do you think? Huh? VFib, very good. Why is VFib more dangerous than AFib? That's very good. Because the job of the ventricles is to deliver blood to the rest of the body. So if you see a patient, you hook an EKG, one thing you at least I want you to take home from Bio 242 is just having a sharp eye between this and this. This VFib is life-threatening. If you see this, just call the attending immediately, right? Because, see, it's not a, remember, fibrillation is like what? tremors, like tremors, right? It's not one solid contraction. And so the VFib is just tremors like that. It's not able to pump that blood to the rest of the body. This patient will die if you don't defibrillate. That's what you mean by defibrillating. You correct it. You defibrillate, you want it to be solid again. This is more dangerous. What is the risk of AFib? If it's not delivering that blood to the ventricle, what's the risk? And then, if it builds up, there's a possibility for it to to the it possibility for it to clot, right? Mm. Because you have lots of formed elements. Remember, blood is thicker than water, so it's not flowing smoothly. It's possible to clot. So these patients on AFib, you give them Coumadin, Warfarin, and then before you send them home, you start them on baby aspirin maybe because they're an AFib. Also, they're candidates for the pacemaker, right? So these are the ones you give a pacemaker. If you don't, they, they may pass out or they will just get weak. They don't have... Um, they just get tired easily. Okay? You see the difference? So I want you to know this and this. This one, the PVCs, you will see this every once in a while. You see the PQRS. There's PQRS. There's no P. There's a QRS. So that means it contracted prematurely without even being stimulated by the atria. That's why you call it PVC. This one is very common from coffee, too much coffee. You'll have that PVC. But what I want you to train your eye is this one and this one. I think in the test, what usually you will be asked, you will be given, you know, an EKG and, and the question will be, please identify which one is AFib, which one shows heart block, which one is BFib. So you don't even have to know these terms. So when you see this word bundle branch block or complete heart block, so it's just telling you where in the heart is the location of the block. But for your purposes, you just tell me that there is a block. To me, that's good enough. There's a block. How do I know there's a block? I know that there's a block if the atria is not followed by the ventricle. Somewhere along the strip, Maybe this one strip here, I see atria, ventricle, atria. Then all of a sudden, there's atria, no ventricle. Or there's ventricle, no atria. There's a block. That's when you write block. This term, bundle branch or complete, is just telling you where. So these patients have had, you remember the coronary circulation is the blood supply to the heart. That means the coronary vessels have been blocked. So there was no blood uh, nourishing, providing oxygen to the heart. That part is dead. That's why it's no longer firing. See? But if the block, you look at a long strip, and you will see some parts will recover. There's a nice atria, ventricle. This means that the coronary circulation, there's still blood supplying the heart of the patient. 
As far as coronary circulation is concerned, do you have any questions on this? I'm going to give you EKG traces. Just practice so you're able to practice. Don't worry about it. So look at this one. See? I see P, Q, R, S. P, Q, R, S. Look at this one. Do you see P? No. no. I just see Q, R, S. No P. So this, I say blockage. There's a block. Okay? Um, between the two, which do you want, which do you prefer? The which do you prefer to see? The P or the... Of course, we want them both to be present. But which one do you prefer to see if there's anything abnormal? I would prefer to see this one, right? This is the ventricle. The atria... See, look at... The atria is on top and the ventricle is below. By gravity, that blood in the atria will eventually drop to the ventricle. But if the ventricle is dead, it has to pump out. And the direction of the pumping out is that way. So I prefer to see healthy QRS. With the P wave, at least I can solve that one. But this one is very hard to treat. Okay. You want to give them the chronic tropical. So what is this one without even looking at the diagnosis? Then? This very good. It's the B fib. I see nice waves, but there's no rhythm in them, okay? So, see? Yes. Yeah, so, so do the valves close when the atrium contracts or the ventricle? When the ventricle contracts, the valves will close. So if it still closes, even if the atrium doesn't contract? Yes, as long as the ventricles contract. When the ventricles contract, the valves should close, okay? So, now, the other part of the heart, the contraction part. The best way to study the rest of the heart is by looking at this one, the cardiac cycle. Don't be scared by this. You have this, I don't know what that page, okay? So look at this part right here. This is just combining both. Let me ask you, and, and you want to be to tell me, are you are your brain still are your brain cells still alive? What do you think? Will you still be able to appreciate? Well and here, okay? It's uh this one is not that hard to appreciate. We're going to review this again on Wednesday. This is it, and then we do our blood slides. Look at, there's your EKG over here. The P is stimulating your atria. Very good. And the QRS stimulating your ventricles. Okay, so I'm going to look at this one. After the atria gets stimulated, the atria will contract. So look at this, the atrial pressure, the green one. So you see that the pressure went up. After it, it gets stimulated, it will contract. Of course, the pressure in the atria increases, right? When the pressure in the atria, we'll, we'll, we will start, our start is all the valves are closed. That's where we start, all the valves are closed. So, and this, this is all one and the same. All the way here, okay? So when the atria contracts, so first the pressure is normal, the green one. Then when the atria depolarizes, it contracts. The pressure in the atria increases. You see the bulge up there. When it increases, it must be increasing to the point that it will then open the valves, right? Then the blood here will move from here to here. So let's look at the ventricular Volume, ventricular volume. This is the volume in the ventricle. Look at what happened. When the atria contracted, I'm going to go down here, the blood went from the atria to the ventricle. So the volume went up. This is the volume for the ventricle. Okay? So then in the meantime, the EKG, it keeps firing. Then the ventricles 
will get depolarized, right? What happens when the ventricles get depolarized? They will contract. So look at the ventricle, the ventricular pressure. See, after the QRS, <coughs> the ventricle pressure goes up. When the ventricle pressure goes up, because it's contracting, it's contracting, and it just received all of that blood from the atrium. Received all of that blood. It will contract. It, the pressure will go up. So that the first thing that happens is it will close this valve. The valve is down, the, the ventricle contracts, it will push the blood so the, the AV valves will close. And that's what you will hear. See, after the pressure going up, you hear the first heart sound. The heart sound detects closing of valves. So the first heart sound is because of closure of your AV valve. The AV valve closes, and enough, enough pressure. If this closes, another valve must open because it contracts to push away blood. It's going to open the semilunar valves, meaning the pulmonary artery or the aorta. So eventually, when it contracts, the pressure goes up. It will contract enough to release all of the blood that it received deliver it to the lungs or the systemic. Look at the volume. The volume in the ventricle went down. Where did it go? It went to the lungs and to your systemic. Okay? So the blood is now there. So in the meantime, the ventricles will relax to go into diastole and another round happens. So this cardiac cycle looks scary. But it really is not. If you know this, if you master this, you already know about your heart. You know all the story about your heart. Then you just look at the abnormal EKG. That's it. It's very easy. There is a point, remember, I said there is a point where all the valves are closed. You always start with all the valves closed. When all the valves are closed, then you increase the pressure in the atria or in the ventricle when all the valves are closed you're increasing the pressure that's what you mean by isovolumetric you don't change the volume the only way to change the volume is to increase the pressure increase increase the pressure until you overcome the resistance, you're going to push open. But initially, the volume does not change. That's when you see the word isovolumetric. Isovolumetric contraction, isovolumetric relaxation. One more time. I'm going to start. There's my right atrium, left atrium. Right ventricle, left ventricle. And then from the right ventricle, you have, this is your pulmonary artery. Left ventricle, you have your aorta. So I'm going to start with all the valves closed. All valves closed. Then you have the P wave. The first is the P wave which is the atria contracts. So when the eight, first it receives blood, of course, it receives blood from your veins, from your superior, inferior vena cava, and your pulmonary veins. So it receives blood. So it gets filled with blood. Then the P wave happens. The P wave results in contraction of the atria. When it contracts, it's going to increase, increase, increase pressure until the valves, the AV valves open. So the blood moves from here to down here in the ventricles. In the meantime, the next wave is the QRS. So the QRS will stimulate my ventricles. So what happens? They contract. When they contract, increase the, the turbulence from the blood will close these ventricles, uh, so the AV valves. 
So there is a point where this is contracting, but the volume stays called isovolumetric contraction. You have to increase the pressure a little bit more to open this. That's the only time that the blood from the ventricle rele uh, is released into your pulmonary artery and your aorta. That's called the stroke volume, meaning each stroke, each heartbeat. So the blood left. And then you repeat the process again. That's why it's called cardiac cycle. Again, the only time you will appreciate this, oh no, the only way to appreciate this is to keep on looking at it and looking at it. And you just start with the EKG and then you finish your story with looking at what happens to the atria and then the ventricles, comparing pressure and volume. Include these heart sounds. These are the sounds that you hear. So, I want you to know these terms. Palpation. Percussion. Auscultation. Of course, number one, by the way, is inspection. These are clinical skills that we use in our physical exam of any patient. The first thing we use is always inspection. You look at the individual. You inspect with your own eyes. And then what is palpation? Feeling. That's palpation. You're feeling. Percussion. Percussion instruments, right? So when you tap, you'll be asked to tap. You can hear the difference in sounds. Okay? Percussion. See? This one. See? Sound here. <clears throat> different here. Because this is just filled with fluid. This is filled with air. See? The difference? And that's how you're able to identify boundaries. Any enlargement <clears throat> of the liver. Percussion. Auscultation is using your stethoscope. Listening. Auscultate is to listen using a stethoscope okay so maybe because i usually I'm, i may not we will not be doing we're just going to have one lab exam i will be giving you a lot of take-home tests but expect pop quizzes so maybe i'll ask you to identify uh, no, define it so you know what this means okay okay so do you agree that the job of the heart is to pump blood it's called cardiac output and there are two things that affect cardiac output heart rate this is the chronotropic right times the stroke volume this is the inotropic so the cardiac output Normally, it's about 5 liters. There are two things that affect that, your heart rate and your stroke volume. To maintain cardiac output, let's say we talked about, I said, a patient with hypovolemia. You said if you lose blood, you predict the heart rate will increase. See how the heart adjusts? The heart will adjust to maintain this normally. People with, uh, let's say, too much blood volume. How does if this blood volume increases, then this one will slow down. The goal is to maintain cardiac output. I remember in the past, students were asked to compute for the cardiac output or whatever. You just need to know this: cardiac output is equal to stroke volume times the heart rate. Let's say you're given this cardiac output. You're given the heart rate. You can find out the stroke volume, right? This, the volume of the heart, there are things that affect this one. The preload, 
the contractility and the after loan. We'll talk about this on Wednesday. For now, I want you to, so how many of you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 